Hey there, MTS here. So recently I've been pretty busy learning smart contracts, blockchain, DeFi, Ethereum, Solidity, the programming language uh, for Ethereum, and then of course Bitcoin Core, uh, reviewing the code, learning about blockchain. This probably, a, you can see the uh, Bitcoin logo there. I'm not that wide to cover it up. Um, but uh, yeah, learning about wallets and BIP39, BIP44. I've got three, four books on my desk and just going through that learning. Uh, it's a huge space, and I think that this is uh, where the industry is going. The, the DeFi, FinTech, is going to change permanently uh, this decade. Within the next five years, we're going to see massive, massive change. And so I'm preparing for that, learning all of this stuff and, uh, uh, you know, learning the Solidity language as well. And I'll create a curriculum on my website, uh, a third track. Uh, I've got Data Analyst Path, and I've got the Software Developer Path, but I also have one more once we're all done with this. And I'll hopefully, I promise, I'll be more regular uh, by on creating content for this channel once I get through all this blockchain stuff. Uh, but I haven't created a video on this uh, on coding for a while, so I figured I'd uh, talk about something that I recently ran into myself. And I should have known better. You know, I've been coding for many years, and uh, sometimes even senior level developers fall victim to this uh, thing that I'm about to talk about, and that is the uh, keyboard first reflex. Meaning, you run into a problem, you're trying to code something and you're, you run into a problem and you directly go to the keyboard and try to crank your way out of it. That's the wrong way of not solving the problem, right? You're supposed to step back and I should have known better, right? I've been through that before in my career. But I just, you know, uh, sometimes you get uh, kind of messy as you become better at coding. You're like, yeah, I'm a good coder. I'll figure this thing out. All right. And, and it, you end up do figuring it out and cranking your way through it, but then it's a terrible solution. Um, you know, it's not, at least it's not the optimal design. So the best way to design something, let's say you're coming up with an idea, you have an app uh, that you want to build. Uh, if you're a junior level developer, don't, don't just go directly to the keyboard. I see so many people go, get trapped in that. They're like, all right, let's create the first class. All right, now how am I going to create these objects? And they, they start coding all these elaborate, uh, you know, they learn about uh, uh, sing the singular design pattern or something or you know, um, there's so many design patterns now, adapter or something. I don't know. I've, I've got a course on design patterns anyway. Uh, you can check those out if you want. But they, they learn this design pattern. They want to implement it immediately in this code, and they're learning this, and they're learning that. And, uh, it's just not the right way of, of, of building something. You actually have, you have to step back, whether it's something new that you're trying to build or a, a problem that you're trying to solve. Step back, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen or pencil, and draw out your end result first. Once you have the end result envisioned and drawn out and objectively understood, then you have to have a path to getting there, the, the, the design path of what, how are you going to get there. And chances are, if you have any assumptions uh, in that path, any big assumptions, let's say, I mean, there, you're going to have to make small assumptions here and there um, as you're writing code. But in, if you have a big assumptions, a big hazy area in your thought track to getting to the end result, Chances are that's going to be your main tripping point. That's where you're going to increase um, problems. Um, there's a uh, something that I came across a couple of days ago called Ocom's Razor, which I found very interesting. And it has to do with, uh, it's, a, it's a principle for problem solving uh, by some philosopher. I don't know. There's a whole backstory behind it. But uh, it basically means keep things simple in a nutshell. But um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. It's... Uh, law of uh, parsimony uh, is a problem-solving principle that entities should not be multiplied beyond necessity. So if you have, let's say, an assumption that you made, and, and you don't know the details of that assumption as much yet until you actually get to the point in which you're ready to get through that assumption and execute and solve it, uh, or get an answer for it, um, until then you're just going to be creating more and more assumptions. And you're creating more complexity. That assumption might lead to problems that you don't even know exist yet. And then you're going to have to be struggling with trying to solve those problems that didn't need to be there in the first place. So sometimes this uh, principle is also paraphrased as the simplest explanation is usually the best one. And I'm, I, I, I can attest to that. I mean, I, I like simple things. You can check on my website. I've got, I've got two simple paths, the data analyst path and the software developer path. And they're both the best paths to be in for software development. You can choose one or the other get your foot in the door in tech. It's nice and simple, straightforward. Um, and so simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, in my opinion. It's the ultimate beauty. I like to keep things simple. 
And that reminded me of a mistake that I recently made when I was going through these books and learning Solidity and so on. After absorbing some of that information, I decided to go ahead and start creating my own, my own cryptocurrency without any kind of plan or without any kind of design. I started writing out contract code and I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing here? Where's my design? <laughs> so obviously I'm still learning and practicing that. So it's not, in, it's, I'm not trying to build an industrial grade application. I'm not trying to build a cryptocurrency. But it's it's just something that it reminded me when I when I went through a little bit of uh, struggle and I'm like, wait a minute, this is not how you're supposed to design software. You're supposed to go to the piece of paper first. And so I figured I should maybe create a video on this subject. I don't think I've covered it in any of my other videos. So uh, especially for those of you that are newcomers, don't uh, jump to the keyboard. That's a reflex all programmers just want to get to quickly. But stay away from that. Most of the designing, most of the coding is actually done up here. You might be taking a shower and you all of a sudden had a light bulb that went off in your head and, and now you have a good design. And, uh, so give it that time. Let, let your ideas uh, um, grow in the garden of your mind uh, on their own and, and continue to plan it out. We talk about design patterns in my curriculum. We talk about UML diagrams, how to design good, construct good software objects and so on. Uh, so all those principles you need to use to write good software and so uh, it starts with a piece of paper and a pencil all right so hopefully this was helpful thank you for watching make sure to like this video subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in another video thank you